Welcome to Retro Arcade Reviews. My name is John, and in this episode, we will be reviewing the arcade classic, Gradius. Gradius is a horizontal scrolling shoot 'em up that was developed by Konami in 1985. I remember playing this game for the NES and was immediately a big fan of it. That's because it was the first game to use the Konami code. So basically, if you pause the game and input the code, you can get most of your power-ups back. Now, the thing is, I don't actually remember playing the arcade version, or maybe I did, and I don't remember because it had a different title. So for the purposes of this review, I replayed the arcade version Gradius without playing the NES version and Life Force so I can totally focus strictly on the arcade game and I can say with the utmost confidence that I never played the arcade game because I wouldn't remember that awesome title screen which was way different from the original Japanese version. Now before I get into the story and gameplay, let's start with a little background on the game. Game designer Machiguchi Hiroyasu was tasked to come up with the game and given a team to work with. To motivate them, he asked the team what kind of game they would be interested in working on and with Star Wars and the hit anime lens man fresh on their minds, they all responded, shoot him up. So they immediately started working on it with the intention of it being a sequel to Scramble and surpassing the popular shoot em up at the time, Xevious. Eventually, the idea of it being a sequel to Scramble was scrapped and the team started working on it as a standalone title. The game underwent a series of trial and error runs in terms of controls, gameplay, and options. They basically wanted to see what worked and what didn't. For instance, instead of collecting random power-ups, which was basically the norm for most shoot em ups, they pretty Pretty much narrowed it down to one item, which would advance the selected item in a power-up menu, allowing you to choose the desired option you want. It's a system you have to get used to if you're playing it for the first time. Now I have to be totally honest, I kind of prefer it the other way where you grab the icon that you want rather than selecting it because you have to take your eye off the action for a bit and see what you're selecting. Also, it becomes slightly frustrating when you die and you're able to retrieve all your power-ups again, but they're kind of bunched up together so it doesn't give you adequate time to select the items you want, but maybe that was the purpose of it. So if you're a nervous player like myself, you end up sometimes picking the wrong option from time to time. The worst thing you can do is accidentally pick the speed icon more times than you want because it makes the ship move way, way fast. In this game, you take control of the Vic Viper, a transdimensional spaceship inspired by the dual no spacecraft in the anime Lensman to battle against an armada of enemies. And that's pretty much all there is to the story, if you're playing Gradius. But if you're playing Nemesis, which is the US version, then you control Captain Nemo and his crew aboard the spaceship Nemesis looking for a lost armada or if you're playing versus Gradius which is based on the NES port of the original arcade game, then you pilot your ship, the Warp Rattler, to save the planet Gradius from Zarya's Super Fortress and the Amoeboid Bacterions. Whichever story you want to go with, you must fight your way through a host of clever aliens. A range of sophisticated weapons such as lasers and force fields can be activated by capturing power capsules in this kaleidoscope battle that wreaks vengeance on the perpetrators of evil. The game plays similar to your usual horizontal scrolling shooters like R-Type, and I wouldn't say that that the game is all that difficult. Yeah, you have your frustrating parts naturally, but it's pretty fair for the most part and pretty short. Fun fact, According to Hiroyasu, the Moai in the game was used to give the game a sense of mystery and was inspired by the Nazca lines used in Sevius. Part of the motivation behind Gradius was to push the genre, to innovate, as seen in the options and in certain boards. But there are some boards that weren't included in the original game because of hardware limitations such as the fast scrolling stage in Gradius 2 and the bubble stage in Gradius 3. So basically, this game would have been crazy if they could have added all this stuff, but the spirit of innovation was still pretty clear when you take a look at the sequels, which made the Gradius series pretty memorable. Gradius was ported over to the Amstrad CPC, Commodore 64, the MSX, the NES, Tomographic 16, the Sega Saturn, the PlayStation, and Nintendo's Virtual Console. It's also available on the PS4 Arcade Archives and included in the Gradius Collection for the PSP and in the Konami Arcade Classic Series Arcade Hits for the DS. So if you want to experience the beginning of a legendary shoot-em-up series, then play this game and let me know what you think.